Hey there, everybody. Welcome to our review and reaction to Succession Season 4, Episode 4, Honeymoon States, which is kind of an interesting title given that that was just a random throwaway quote from Connor. Like, we'll talk more about Connor when we get to Connor's Corner a little later <laughs> yeah. on in the ep in this video. But, you know, there is a lot of other stuff to talk about. I, I think inevitably there's going to be, I don't want to call it a letdown because I don't, I think that implies that this episode's a letdown, but I think it's just last week was iconic and brilliant and like heart wrenching. And that's a hard thing to live up to. Like this moved a little bit slower to me, but it was still very enjoyable. No, I mean, it's hard to follow up with the death of Logan Roy. However, yeah. I mean, this episode started out swinging as well, where it was like right away, she was pregnant. I mean, that was a huge, huge, you know, drop in this episode. And it was like right away. And that can change the dynamic of a lot of things for her. Yeah, and I mean, we'll, we'll get into whether or not that changes the dynamic at all when it comes to some of the decisions that she makes because, you know, Shiv does make some important decisions in this episode and mm -hmm. also has a pretty scary moment with that fall. And, like, mm -hmm. there's a lot of different things going on. But as we start to dive into all of it, go ahead, hit that subscribe button. You know, it is it is there for you. It is free to use. It is not $63 million. All you got to do is just, like, go down there, hit that. You know, we have succession discussions here every week throughout this final season that we are inching closer and closer to the end. We don't want you to miss those. And we're also covering Yellow Jackets here, Ted Lasso. I mean, there's there's a lot going on at the channel, so hit that subscribe button. Follow us over on our Instagram, Matt and Just TV. Okay, let's okay. start out right away with talking about Shiv being pregnant, because I mean, this this may or may not influence anything when it comes to her relationship with Tom. I don't think that it is going to. I mean, is she going to tell him eventually? She's going to kind of have to. I mean, eventually he's going to see a baby and be like, <laughs> what's happening? Where did this baby come from? But I do think that the relationship with Shiv and Tom is going to go in a really interesting direction after this episode. Everybody put in your tinfoil right. hats All right. Okay, so the sort of quick summary here is that Kendall and Roman are now in charge. And we saw that conversation where Shiv was like, no, it has to be the three of us. And Kendall and Roman were like, we can sell the two of us, but we can't sell the three of us. Don't worry. We got you. And I think the minute that she feels any sort of uncertainty that they don't have her anymore that they're trying to get one over on her she's going to pull together all the allies that she possibly can and tom has been walking around this whole thing being like i'm at your service i'm at your service yeah. i'm at anybody's service who wants me to be at their service and I think that Shiv may take that opportunity and be like, oh, you want to be at my service? Cool. We need to do something about what's going on with my brothers because I'm getting cut out. Whether she actually will be or not, it's going to be whatever she perceives to be happening to her at that time. Tom is basically the butler to every high-level executive at this point. And, you know, it is both incredibly irritating i think to just see somebody walk around do this to everybody but it's also so in line with who tom is tom is trying to like cling to some like last vestige of power that he can here is shiv they obviously have a personal relationship they have a professional relationship i think shiv at this point she's very willing i think to play the long game perhaps in a way that some other people are not and i think she's trying to not be overly reckless in all of this mm -hmm. like clearly she's got a lot going on and i think i think this is a pretty smart move for her to not rush into anything because you know well that's this is not necessarily a tinfoil hat thing it's just more of a piping hot take kindle and roman are gonna be terrible at this like i'm gonna go out and say that kindle roy is the least qualified, worst possible person. Like, Logan would have been better to just write that in Invisible Ink because what, what is Kendall? He is a poser. He has incredible delusions of grandeur. Do we need not forget that what actually happened at the end of season one? Like, the mess that is there? Yeah, but Roman is going to do a good job yes. of this. He has 
always had that potential. And once he started to like sort of take himself a little bit more seriously and and really start, I mean, we've really seen him step up with a lot of ideas that have been good ideas. And it's just people need to have more confidence in him. And I think now that he's in this position, if he has these ideas in this position, people may take him a little more seriously and they may actually start to go forward. I mean, he could do something here and he does, he does care. If we're just going to, like, let's just narrow all this down for a moment to the Roys. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to pay attention to Jerry or Frank or Hugo or anybody else for right now. Like, just the Roy trio. I think the best combination here is you have Shiv as sort of the public leader and you have Roman as the puppet master behind the strings. Like, I, I said last week that he's better off as a Robin, but he could, he could also be a co-Batman. He could be a co-leader, but he needs somebody else to go and do the talking. Shiv's got experience in the political world. She knows how to run these things. We saw her give that statement last week. So if Shiv just buys her time, waits for Kendall to inevitably just flame out spectacularly because he's going to tick somebody off. He's going to, because this is the most like self-destructive person imaginable. As long as Roman doesn't just like give himself a swirly along the way, like they could team up. I actually think that the three of them work together really well. I think that they they all are able to keep each other in check. And I think without Shiv being part of that three, that's how we ended up at the end of this episode where basically it was brought to Roman and Kendall this idea of, you know, how do we sort of publicly go forward with the two of you, you know, running this company? What type of image do we put together? Do we want to like go this way? Or do we want to, you know, put Logan headfirst under this bus and bring out Carrie and all these other things yeah. that he was doing where Roman was like, no, I don't want to do that. You know, get this out of here. And we saw at the end of the episode, Kendall very much pull a Logan Roy where he's basically like, Hugo, you're going to do that. You're going to do it sort of off the record, off the books. And if you don't, I'm not going to help you with your problem. So you're going to do it sort of thing. And I think if Shiv was part of this mix, he may have been a little more nervous to do something like that because there would have been more of a blowback. Kendall, Kendall, you, okay. It's time to have a talk, Kendall. You, I've already insulted you like three times in this video, so I'm assuming if you were real, you're not watching anymore anyway, but we're going to do this anyway. You are such a snake. Like, you are, re you have all of the negative qualities of Logan Roy without any of the positive qualities, and as horrible a person as Logan was, he was a competent leader at times. It's just like, Kendall is doing such a, just like a, uh, just such an unlikable thing here. And obviously Jeremy Strong is great in this role. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's worth everything that he puts into doing this role, but he's great at this role. It's just like, I come out of this episode having so much sympathy, I think for Roman trying to be the better person and trying to actually kind of handle things the right way. And I'm so mad at Kendall, who's just, He's just going to hurt him. Like, this is going to come out. I don't know why Kendall assumes that it it's not. I think the thing is about where Kendall is sitting with this. I mean, there's a lot that's happened, obviously, between him and his dad yeah. throughout this time. Things that they've done to each other. And it's been really bad and really ugly. And I mean, even sort of... That last moment where he's looking at that paper that, you know, has no date on it. You know, they don't know when Logan put, you know, that it should be Kendall. I mean, it was probably a long time ago. It probably yep. wasn't recent. I, I think he knows that Logan crossed his name out. I mean, we all saw it more close up. Like, it looked like it was being crossed out. And which would make the most sense. This was... It was not going to be his dying wish to give the company to his son that he's not even speaking to at this point. He probably, if it was like, 
you know, he wrote it the night before, it probably would have been Roman because Roman was the person that he was, you know, kind of working with at this point. And he was at least even talking to, but it wasn't going to be Kendall. And I think that that moment where we see Kendall really looking at that piece of paper, I think he knows it was crossed out and then was just like, you know what, Hugo, here's the bus schedule, hand it to my dad. <laughs> this is the... Here's the one smart thing that Kindle does in this episode. In, in my opinion, I'm ready to just <laughs> fight it out with all the Kindle stands in the comments here. I but, know, uh, you really are. Okay, now there's the smartest thing that Kindle did is making mm -hmm. sure, you know, he is with that. Have the wherewithal to be up there with Roman. Because, yeah, if you are well aware of the fact that you probably aren't going to get anywhere when it comes to the old guard, like, proving your relationship with your father being anything... Like, Roman actually being super secretive and hush-hush about his secret conversations with Logan is suddenly a little bit of a plus, mm -hmm. because it's suddenly like he can pull out this card that he can play, and a lot of other people aren't going to expect it, and that sort of gives him a little bit of a one-up. I mean, plus, this is the other big part of it, is that's it's a little bit problematic, but... If Roman can find a way to either prove or present really strong evidence that not only did Logan want Jerry out, but he tasked Roman with doing this, which we know why Logan did this. It was just to be a terrible father. It wasn't actually because he had any faith of Roman as a leader, but Roman can try to spin it that way if he wants to. He absolutely can if he wants to, but I, I just don't see him doing that. Roman feels more like the type of guy who is going to do something like that if he's backed into a corner and he doesn't have another option. He's not he's not the best person. Nobody on the show is the best person, but typically he yeah. doesn't go that route to try to hurt somebody to gain something else. He usually takes another road first. I really like I, I really liked Roman in this episode. And I'm not even just saying that from like a one-liner standpoint. He had some spectacular uses of certain words that we can't say in this video, but like even him just like trying to be there for Carrie in a moment when everybody was just being, you know, so judging of Carrie, and, you know. Yes. And like it showed the <laughs> Roman is a Roman is a person. <laughs> He's got some problems. He's got some really, really big problems, but he's good at least at putting on an appearance. Listen, I am Team Roman. You guys know yeah. that. If you've been watching these videos, if you're new to the channel, welcome. I am Team Roman. However, that scene with Carrie, no, no, no. I, I understand Carrie's in pain. Carrie's asking to go up to the bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> It's off. With where she was having an affair with Logan and asking that to his wife. It doesn't matter if, you know, Marsha was in another country shopping, whatever, for a month and a half. She she has been put through so much with Logan and his other women and everything that was going on with all of this. Like after what happened that first time that we saw with Rhea and everything there, she was like, Logan, like, you know, you got to really put something on the table for me to stay with you through all of this. Like it can't happen again. And then it happens again. And then that woman's going to come over like, a day after your husband has passed away and be like, let me collect my things from your bedroom. Get out. Yes. Take her out the back. Roman at that point being like, Hey, are you okay? Come on. It's so beyond inappropriate. I think what Carrie did, obviously very, very inappropriate. I think what Roman did when like all her stuff starts falling out, I, I, I think maybe a part of it was I'm just trying to get her out of here as soon as possible. It's hard to always read his motives. Especially when Carrie's on the floor being like, he was going to do this for me and that yeah. for me. It's like, okay, well, so what? Then we know why you're here. You're also here for the same reason everybody else is here. You thought you were going to get a piece of the pie and you didn't. So goodbye. I think maybe. I don't have any sympathy for her, especially after that scene. I was just like, you know, there are times to do stuff like that. And that is not the time. 
I think what it may come up with is I don't relate to Roman a lot on a human level, but I think if it was me in that situation and I was like, okay, how can I get this person out of here without trying to make a scene? I think I would be the person who'd just be like getting her things and like trying to push her out. You were absolutely to get her things and push her out. But there was a moment that he did say some sort of dialogue that was something about like, come on, can't we give her a break? It's just like. Uh, no, she's, she shouldn't be there. She's been having an affair with this woman's husband. She's asking to go up to this woman's bedroom to get her. Oh, ugh, the whole thing was so icky. Let's, let's move, let's move from icky to Connor, my guy, Connor. We have, okay. See, Connor was interested in real estate at a very young age, just no, like he was right. interested. This <laughs> The the thing I love about Connor is that he, you know, he's blunt, he's honest, he is very, he, he's he's a little bit to the point. The thing that's going to get him in big trouble is that apparently he's spending sixty three million dollars on a house when I'm not entirely sure how much like liquid money Connor really has. And the other thing is just like Connor, you are in the process of running for president that's not a cheap thing to do where is will gonna get the money for her place when you keep spending it on a house and really weird commercials you're probably putting on the air listen i think this is probably a good move for him i mean he's got his sort of compound out in the middle yeah. of nowhere if he's really sort of hard up for cash he can sell that i don't think he is. I mean, it seemingly all the kids are billionaires at this point. You know, 63 million is, you know, not anything for him. I think he's going to be just fine. And him being closer sort of in the city where everything is sort of going on, I think is a, a good move for him as well. And I'm sure Marsha at this point is like, well, I don't really want to be in this place where my husband has had this other woman up in our room, like that sort of thing. I'm sure she is wanting to kind of unlock load it and move on to something else and it was also kind of interesting that it wasn't really brought up from the first season where you know logan had the kids signing a bunch of stuff to have marcia have a lot of power in this company i was yeah. kind of expecting that this whole episode i was waiting for that to come up the minute that it was like oh she's back for the funeral i was like oh here it all comes like you know she has she has some power here so what exactly is she gonna do with it and nothing came of it i but colin gotta watch good i'm, I'm one I'm, that was there's something <laughs> about that relationship with logan and yeah. colin that just like ow like it feels very genuine that he he logan actually really respected colin it's such an interesting like dichotomy here because it's sort of like you have jared mankin who's just like showing up and everybody's upset about it because like there's no really you know logan's friend he had no friends he called colin his best friend and colin didn't well, that know was also kind of sad <laughs> yeah colin didn't know how exactly to take that but i think the fact that colin's got to watch like there's some proof to it but in and getting back to Marsha, this is where I sort of think Marsha's kind of landing at this right now. I think she's waiting to sort of see where some of the chips fall. And I think when she kind of has a better understanding of that, she might be just sort of willing to throw her hat into the ring at that certain point. Because I think she knows she probably doesn't want to run any of this stuff. She probably just wants to make sure her money is taken care of, mm -hmm. that she has a place where she can yield whatever sort of influence she wants. And that's why... I think that both Marsha and Connor are interesting hanging chads in this episode. Connor, my 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 tinfoil hat thing with Connor, maybe I do say this because I am a Connor fan, but it is that I'm not saying he's ever going to get substantially above the 1% that he has in support, but there's a lot of sympathy that can come from losing a loved one. Yes. And like, you know, we didn't, necessarily talk too much about this in last week's video but if connor plays this the right way he can be emotional and he can be empathetic it's like he can get this to get people on his side to take him a little bit more seriously than like hey i'm just some product of nepotism who grew up in some rich environment if he's willing to be honest he can be like I had a very tough relationship with my father. I just lost my father. I'm going through a lot of things, but I'm here. I'm ready to fight for you. I don't know how long Connor can stay on that train without going into full-on delusion island, but it would be fun to see. But eventually, if he wields enough 
power or gets enough support, like he would have a pretty important voice in what happens to Waystar moving forward. Yeah, I think that it is possible that his father's passing is something that's going to keep him at that 1% or bring him over that 1% because things like this can really move the needle. As as he was even saying, you know, before earlier this season, oh, we need to, you know, shake up the wedding and have all these crazy things happen to yeah. get into the news cycle. Now he's in the news cycle with his father passing and, you know, it's like, oh, and his son is, you know, running for president. You know, it's, it, it is something that could move the needle for him. He's not going to be the president by the end of this whole thing, no. but it could be enough to give him, you know, just that little bit of space in there where he's also being heard. He wants to be in the conversation. Yeah, he 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 does. And I think speaking of other people who want to be in the conversation, like I, I think this is a, it's probably not a recurring thing because I'm not going to come up with good ideas for this every week, but like, I have a most valuable bit player and a least valuable bit player in this episode. All right. Most valuable player, a least bit player. <sighs> My guy Stewie. He comes in. He hits like two home runs in like five seconds. He like the best moment of Kendall in this entire episode is like him and Stewie hugging each other because it's just sort of like, look at this, Kendall. You have like a pseudo genuine relationship with somebody who kind of understands. <laughs> Kind of, I mean, he still ended it with like, what's in it for me, yeah. you know? This is as good as Kendall's ever going to get. Like, that's sort of my feeling on it. But I love Stewie. Stewie is a total train wreck and not a good person, but I like watching him. Least valuable. Oh boy, I've already made all the Kendall fans mad. So, Greg, I, I did not have any use for you in this episode. I'm sorry. You just showed no, up. You I, stammered a lot. I agree. I think that things just... I, it almost feels like they just don't know what to do with him this season, that he's only here for a little bit of comic relief and which is not what's, you know, his position in the past. Yeah. Yes. He's, he's funny, obviously, but in the past in other seasons, they've had, you know, pretty good stories for him as well. And now he's just kind of showing up to throw out these sort of awkward lines that just, He's just not fitting in for whatever reason. And maybe that's just part of the chaos of Logan passing anyways. You know, people are displaced. Look at Tom. I'll yeah. be, you know, I'm here to serve you. I'm here to serve you. He's lost as well. I think what I'm just interested in kind of seeing as we move a little bit forward is just sort of expanding the show outward a little bit. These last couple of episodes, I mean, last week, exceptional. One of the best episodes, I think, of the whole series. but. This week, it did feel a little bit claustrophobic at times that we were all kind of in the same spot. It felt almost real time at times. And I just, I'm, I, I hope we get to see, you know, I know they're going to Norway later this season, mm -hmm. but, you know, Matson's going to be coming in. I just want to see the world get a little bit larger again and sort of see more of these characters in different places doing different things and sort of getting an air of unpredictability as we build up to the finale. Yeah, I think, you know, they've got, it's going to be tough moving forward anyways, because now that Logan is not part of the show and now sort of we've had this episode where we're kind of like saying goodbye, everyone's together, giving some words, planning everything. It's going to be interesting to sort of see how they can move forward at the same speed without Logan on the show. And it feels like Kendall right now is filling those shoes where he's willing to be as ruthless as he needs to be, as ruthless as his dad would be. His dad said that he didn't have it in him to be a killer. Remember that yeah. whole scene? Here we are, right? Like he's... Is he doing this because it's going to be right for them and right for the company? Or is he doing this because his dad crossed his name out? <laughs> I miss Brian Cox. Like, I'm just going to say it. Like, I miss I missed Logan in this episode. Like, who's going to yell at people to F off? Like, Kendall. Who... I don't know. It's just not the same. I'm sorry, Kendall. It's, it's not your fault here. Yeah, like, I feel like, you know, the three kids are going to be able to keep this show going for the rest of the season, but his presence is missed. I'm not going to pretend like it's not. The back and forth with him and the kids and sort of that manipulation that's going on, I mean, it was such a huge part of the show and part of the reason why we all watched. 
All right, well, we will be back next week to discuss episode five. Once we're on the other side of that, we will be at the halfway point. So hit that subscribe button so you guys are here for the rest of this journey. We will see if Kendall and Roman really in this show on top. I highly doubt it, Doubtful. but we will see y'all here next time.